I like to encourage people to try out new games and jump into the unknown, so I decided to take my own advice and start playing a game from a franchise I've never touched before, and that is Persona. I've known about the existence of Persona for a long time, like since maybe the early 2000s probably, but I've been reluctant to give the series a go, and that reluctance has only increased as more games were released. I actually own Persona 2 for the PSP for many years now, because I got it for pretty cheap, but I never ended up playing it, obviously. I was a bit worried whether I should play the first game first, plus there's the fact that Persona is a, well, maybe not a spin-off, but like a sub-series of the Shin Megami Tensei games. I was thinking maybe I should play those first? RPGs are usually quite long games and I wasn't super keen on playing several of those just to catch up. So more and more I convinced myself that I probably should just leave the series alone. But then I thought, why? I can just play whichever Persona game I want. Some viewers have told me that the Persona games are for the most part their own thing, though some are more connected than others. I know there would be references and connections I wouldn't recognize, but hey, that's just how it is. If I end up really liking it, then perhaps I'll play some of the earlier games. There's actually a specific reason why I picked up Persona 5 as my introduction to the series rather than an earlier game. I think most of the time when somebody asks, which game should I start with? They actually mean, can I just play the newest game? It makes sense, most people have current or current-ish systems. So hopefully this video will be a good indicator of what to expect when jumping into the series by playing Persona 5 without any experience with the older games. I'm not going to mention too much of the story just to avoid spoilers, just so you know. When I talk about the story, it'll be the first part of the game, and that's basically it. So, what's Persona 5 about? The logo makes it look like a racing game or something. Seriously, that could be the logo and name of some Japanese aftermarket performance car parts manufacturer. Yeah, I got an HKS high power catback, NK NT03 wheels, full Project Mew big brake kit, and Persona 5 polyurethane bushings. Obviously, it's not any of those things, but it was a thought that I needed to convey, apparently. I think we all know, at the very least, that Persona is a turn-based JRPG. Unlike other more traditional JRPGs, which often go for fantasy style, Persona 5, and actually just Persona in general, uh, prefers to anchor itself to the real world. That's one of the reasons I was drawn to the series in the first place. The fantasy bits are like an extra layer sitting on the groundworks of realism. The various locations in Tokyo are like an equivalent to towns and cities in RPGs. They're safe zones that allow you to buy equipment and do certain tasks. The fantasy aspects of the game take place in the metaverse and can be thought of as dungeons. I think this is a great example of packaging already existing ideas into something interesting and unique. While the basic gameplay elements aren't anything new or revolutionary, the way they're implemented and integrated into the game world is really compelling. The story goes like this. You play as a high school student who is wrongly accused of assault, even though all he did was defend a woman from a drunk person. He gets sent to live with a family acquaintance and transfers to the only high school that would accept him. It's during that time he meets this weird-looking guy called Igor in what seems to be a dream, who tells him that rehabilitation is needed in order to avoid ruin. Ooh, vague words. The main character learns about personas, which are manifestations of a person's personality. When a persona within a person awakens, it grants the user powers and the ability to fight. The MC, along with an ever-growing set of allies, go to the metaverse in order to steal treasures from palaces. Palaces are like a materialization of negative and corrupt desires of a person. Its appearance is based on how that person sees themselves and other people. Stealing a palace's treasure effectively removes those desires, making it possible for a person to have a change of heart and regret their past actions. For example, in the first part of the story, the MC and his allies try to deal with Kamoshida, an abusive volleyball coach of Shujin Academy, which is the school the protagonist is attending. They go into Kamoshida's palace in the metaverse and attempt to steal the treasure, which would then make Kamoshida admit his crimes. Afterwards, they form a group called the Phantom Thieves of Heart in order to deal with other people with distorted desires. The gameplay in the palaces is very much like a dungeon in a JRPG. Coming into contact with enemies initiates a turn-based battle. There's the usual ambush or be ambushed sort of thing. 
In the battles, you can do normal attacks and also special attacks that use SP. There's an elemental system like you'd expect. The special attacks are based on the character's persona. The player character has the unique ability to have more than one persona, which you can very much use to your advantage by switching them in battle. There's also ranged attacks you can do with guns and other shooty things. When traversing palaces, you can also steal things to get items and hide in corners to ambush enemies or just avoid being spotted. The palaces do have a security level, so try to stay hidden. It's not super hard. It's not like you're doing like splinter cell sort of stuff. You know, just hit X and then, um, yeah, you're just uh, hiding in the corner. Uh, even though it's kind of funny that you're like in plain sight, the enemies just walk past you. You have a deadline for each of the palaces. You're free to spend your given time how you wish. You can do anything from improving attributes of your character by studying, spending time with other allies, or doing things like part-time jobs to earn money. I really like that. Other RPGs usually allow you to take all the time in the world, which for me makes me want to do 100% of the quests, but I never do and I stop playing because it can be quite time consuming. But in Persona 5 it's different. Because of the limited amount of time, you start prioritizing what you think is important and therefore it doesn't feel like you're missing out on things that you haven't done. And if you do feel that way, at least it's not because of your own lack of commitment. You just didn't have time to do it. But it's not just the time thing that I like. The real world activities are fun in an immersive way. I like the whole information gathering type of stuff you do at school sometimes and also in public locations. People talk about different things when, you know, depending on what's going on in the story. So it kind of feels like a place that's really alive and the events that are happening feel like they're really happening. The way you get introduced to the fantasy slash supernatural aspects of the game I think is well done. The story starts off with the main character in a highly stylized looking casino where you get a taste of the action right away. But you get arrested by the police and during questioning the main character starts recalling the events leading up to what you just saw. I like that because you can see what the gameplay is going to be like right away but then it goes back into the past to show you how the fantastical elements of the story start to creep into everyday happenings of the protagonist. One of the main character's first friends in the game, Ryuji Sakamoto, is actually a big part of why the introduction of the metaverse works really well. With video games or any sort of media, it's really easy to just think of grandiose, fantastical things as normal. So you need something or someone to tell you that it isn't, which has the strange effect of adding believability. Having a quiet main character who only speaks a few lines of actually voiced dialogue isn't really enough. So Ryuji fulfills that purpose. He serves an important early game storytelling role just by pointing these things out. Oh yeah, I should also say that uh, as you're playing, um, even though the main character doesn't really say much, you do choose what the character says in certain circumstances. I think it's done in a good way so, you know, you feel more involved with uh, what's going on. Let's talk about how Persona 5 looks, not just the technical aspects, but the art style. I really like the art style. Right away when I started the game, I thought, this is nice. The opening movie, or opening, um, well, yeah, movie, whatever, has this Studio Shaft vibe, complete with non-moving plaid. The menu has this great look with the silhouettes. The red, black, and white color scheme is really powerful and high contrast. There's a reason so many companies, organizations, and artistic projects use these colors so much. They literally always look good. The menus have this great dynamic quality. I love how your options are overlaid around the characters uh, and they come out at different angles. So much more imaginative than just a rectangle on the bottom of the screen. Other details I like is the loading screens when going between areas in the real world where you can see the people walking around or standing in a train. I don't know if I managed to record an instance of this happening, but I like that occasionally you'll see one of the main characters walking across the loading screen. It really works well in a symbolic way. It reinforces the theme of rebellion and how the characters always seem to never fit in, since only the main characters have clearly recognizable features in the loading screens. The metaverse places like the menus have a cel-shaded look to them that's very artistic, there's a surreal vibe going on to everything. Their transition screens are pretty cool too. And uh, they're different to the real world transitions because uh, you've got the main character like jumping, but it's done in like this really super high contrast way. I think it's kind of cool. 
The characters have a unique art style that nicely differentiates itself from some of the more common anime styles. While it is unique, it's not exactly my thing, but it's not like I think it's ugly or anything. The real-world locations are really detailed and immersive. I love that part the most, just walking down the streets and seeing all the little details, like that uh, car elevator parking lot thing, and it even has the spinning disc out front. The various coned-off sections on the road, you know, like that have this in Japan, you see that all the time. The signage in the subway stations, those accessibility lines that are often yellow, which you can find on sidewalks and station platforms, the interior and layout of the school. I can go on and on. I'm really interested in Japan, so it's just nice to look at and walk around in the game. By the way, to anybody who likes the show Japanology, I noticed that you can even find the touchscreen vending machine that was featured in the vending machine episode. I really hope I'm not the only person in the world to be excited to have spotted that. It's all about the details. There's also some other fun stuff that I enjoy, like Morgana's little cartoony dust cloud when he runs, the animations when you do the all-out attacks also, they have that comic book slash manga style at the end with the victory pose, and then also the victory screens where they walk around the camera. Visually speaking, Persona 5 is very entertaining for me. My only complaint with the graphics is two things, actually. The high contrast look can be a bit tiring on the eyes. Sometimes just bringing up the menu almost blows my face balls out of their sockets. And there's occasions where really specific things can look crummy, like some of the textures aren't super great. And there's also this one shadow, you know, in a very early part of the game that's doing its best PlayStation 1 impression. But the thing is, the game is so artistic and has such a great style, you just kind of ignore all that stuff. The music is interesting, there's a lot of jazzy sounding music, which I quite like. I have no complaints with the sound effects either. Everything seems appropriate with attacks and things of that sort. The everyday background noises in the real world sound great too. When it comes to the voice acting, I think the English dub is very good. I like both the English and Japanese performances. There's only two bits of criticism from me. Firstly. On existing save games, you have to change the language at the load save game screen. It's not like that's particularly difficult to do, but you'd probably not think to look there. At first I switched it in the settings menu, yet my loaded game stayed the same language. And then once it's loaded up, there's no setting for it. But anyways, once you know, you know. The other thing I don't like is how some of the names are pronounced in the English dub. For example, Sakamoto. Really? It's obviously pronounced Sakamoto. I really don't know how stuff like this happens. That's like pronouncing Hiroshima as Hiroshima, or Ontario as Ontario, or America as America. Anyway, you get used to it. There's more important things in life to get stressed over. Other than that, I have no complaints with the English dub, and it's kind of fun to switch back and forth now and then. I also found it funny how Morgana, the game's resident cat thingy, keeps talking throughout the battle. Like he'll mention that there's a weakness when you bring up enemy info, it's like he's hyping up the battles. I thought it'd be annoying at first, but I found it strangely endearing. There's some more gameplay stuff I want to talk about now. On the topic of personas, firstly, you can switch the main character's persona in battle once each battle. You can't do that with any other character. When you're fighting, there are occasions where you can start talking with the shadows, uh, the shadows being the enemies in the palaces. There are moments where you can choose to spare them, uh, by requesting items or money from them, or you can also ask them to lend you uh, their power and then they can become personas for you to use. There's also a mechanism where you can combine two personas into one. You can't just combine just whatever you want though because the created personas can have a higher level than you, which automatically means you can't combine them. They have to be at your level or lower. The whole ordeal surrounding the act of combining personas is kind of bizarre, you have to execute them, and then they fuse. Like, I don't get that. Why is this execution imagery being used? Is it supposed to represent something symbolic and I'm just not getting it? Whatever the case, I created a succubus persona, so that's all I care about. After completing the first palace, there's some new gameplay elements that get added. Mementos is like a somewhat random dungeon where you can do side quests and steal people's hearts. There's multiple floors, it's referred to as a collective palace for the general public. Upon seeing this, the main menu uh, suddenly makes sense. The layout changes somewhat between your visits. 
For some reason, Morgana turns into a bus here. Not the first cat bus, I suppose. And you just drive around through the uh, dungeon or, uh, I guess, through mementos. The driving physics, if you want to call them that, are pretty horrific. I really don't like it. Hitting walls makes uh, Morgana's tail all spiky. And it's funny how the entire bus <laughs> jumps into the air uh, during ambushes and when opening doors. The victory screen is also changed here, so instead of the characters posing and walking around the rotating camera, Morgana just casually drives by. In the real world, you can also further relationships with other people by spending time with them. Not only does it give you gameplay benefits, but I think the characters are interesting enough that you actually do want to spend time with them and get to know them better. The life simulator aspects are quite fun, not just the relationships with the characters, but also the various activities you can do to up your stats. Like, if you want to increase your knowledge, you can read books borrowed from the school library or ones purchased from one of the many stores. Occasionally in class, you'll be asked questions and gain a couple of points if you answer them correctly. You can have jobs to make money, but you can't get certain jobs if your stats are too low. On the other hand, having certain types of jobs can uh, up certain stats. Overall, I think the life simulation aspect of Persona 5 encourages you to run around the various locations and just immerse yourself in the environment. I mean, if you want to, you can even use the washing machine. And no, it's not just a gimmick, you actually do need to use the washing machine for specific things. In the end, there's still a lot for me to do in this game. Some of the cast on the cover still haven't joined my party yet, so I'm still excited to keep playing this game. I've been enjoying my time with Persona 5 immensely. The biggest surprise for me is how the game includes so many elements that I normally don't like in other games, anime or manga. Yet I like the game a lot. Like for example, the metaverse outfits for the most part I think look pretty silly. I don't like most of the designs for the personas. The way the characters are like jumping around and doing flips in the palaces when, you know, platforming I think looks kind of goofy. The whole masked phantom thief aesthetic, using swords when guns exist. I can go on and on. Basically, if it looks like it's from a shonen action anime, I'm usually put off by it. But the way the story is presented, these elements I dislike are not exactly parodied, but more lampshaded, which for me makes it fun. It's all about context. For example, I don't like carrots at all, but I like carrot muffins. And then there's those healthy juices that often have carrot juice in them, and I like those too. Sushi often has ingredients I don't like separately, like avocado, but in sushi, I like it. In fact, I usually like sushi more if it has avocado in it. Or how about an art example? I'm usually not fond of the color yellow, like on cars, for example. Do I hate paintings or pieces of art just because there's maybe some yellow in there? No, of course not. That'd be stupid. Most things we experience in life are a combination of many different things. It's like those great memories that you'll remember forever. A lot of times, things you dislike happened in them. Like getting lost in a big city because you took the wrong bus while you were picking up your first car from the previous owner's house. Or that time when you were the best man at a wedding and you had to run an entire block and then climb up a seemingly vertical dirt path while in a suit during like 38 degrees Celsius weather with no cloud in the sky to relieve you of your suffering. Those become memorable experiences and I find that to be the case with Persona 5. Maybe it's a bit of a strange parallel, but that's how I feel about it. So even though there are things that I don't like in Persona 5, I wouldn't like Persona 5 as much if it didn't have those things in them. So that's my experience with Persona 5. I'm really glad I decided to give the game a go. It's a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if you've played Persona 5 or any other Persona game and what you thought of it. It doesn't matter if you've played only one or all of them or anywhere in between. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to subscribe for more videos. There's also a second channel with niche anime game news and also some Let's Plays. I haven't uploaded anything in the last week because I was busy playing Persona, uh, but I'll get back into it. And finally, thank you to all the Patreon supporters. You can get your name on this end card by supporting me on Patreon, and you get other perks too, like you're able to see the videos before they're released on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.